Hi, welcome back to another episode of Seamless Info YouTube channel. This is Abhavajit. Hope you all are doing fine and keeping well. Due to my yearly exams, I could not post any videos for the last couple of weeks. I appreciate all your support which you have been providing me. Also, I request you to consider subscribing my channel which will really encourage me to come up with more informative videos. I am not wasting any more time, let's move on to the video. As I discussed in an earlier video, Python is one of the most popular programming languages in the world today. And this is the continuity to that video where I will demonstrate how to install Python and start with a simple program. I mentioned the part 1 video link above and I highly recommend you to watch that video since this is part 2. So as I discussed earlier, Python is developed under an OSI approved open source license. So basically it is free to use. You can download Python from its official website. You can simply go to Google and type Python download. The first link will be the official website to download Python. At present, the latest version is 3.9. This version was first released on October 2020. Depending on your operating system, you can choose Windows, Mac OS or any other. To write the code for Python, we would also need a Python interpreter. An interpreter is a program that reads and executes code. When we learn Python, we would want to do complex programs like building a calculator or some website other than adding two numbers. In this case, we use an IDE which stands for Integrated Development Environment. So technically, it is a software application that allows you to write, test and debug your code in a very simple and easy way. Examples of IDE include PyCharm, Visual Studio Code and IDLE. A IDE normally consists of at least a source code editor, build automation tools and a debugger. So let's start with some basic programs. Adding two numbers using Python. This is very simple and easy other than using Java or C++. Just enter the numbers you need to add. Let's say 1 plus 1. It will give you the output of 2. The same way you need to subtract as well. And I have shown you one more example. The same thing can be done in another way. Let's say we can use X and Y. Let x be 10 and y be 15. So to get the output for x plus y, just type print brackets x plus y to get the result. Now we go to a different program where the user has to input any value and get the automatic done. Here we use the input function where the system will take the input from the user. Let's say the user needs to convert the distance between two cities from kilometer to meter. First, we take the input from user in kilometers for the distance. We take the input function here. Usually, the system takes the input as string value or letters in default. We want the value in integer or number value, so we use the int function here. So we write kilometer is equal to int input enter the distance in kilometers. Now, once we get the kilometers, the system needs to convert it into meters. So we all know that one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters. Now, we take one more variable as m. So m is equal to kilometers, which is already taken as the variable for kilometers above in 2000. So we need the visit to be printed. We use the print function here as print the distance in meters is m which gives the result in meters. How simple is it right? Now I will show you how to write a program using conditions. Here the system will check the conditions and provide the result based on the user input. Here I am using if condition to check the value entered by the user is odd or even. The logic here is if the user input is even the system will give the result as even else it will give as odd. So how will we write the code for this? The same way we learned for the earlier program we use the input function here to take the input from the user. So let's take num as the variable here. So num is equal to int 
input and tell a number to check if it is odd or even. Now the system takes the input. So now we need to check if the input entered by the user is even or odd. So to do that, as you all know, when we divide a number by 2 and if we get the reminder as 0, then the number is even, right? So we use the same logic here. In Python, the symbol for reminder is modular operator. You might also know it as percentage symbol. Here we take a new variable as x. So x is equal to num. This is the variable we have taken for the input from user and the reminder symbol and 2. So the system will divide the given number by 2 and check if the reminder is 0. Now we use the if else condition. So if x is equal to 0, that means if the remainder is 0, then it should print the number as even. Print number as even. We should print like that. Else it should print the number is odd. From these programs, you understand that Python is an easy programming language to learn. I hope this video will provide some basic information to kickstart your learning about Python. Can you mention your views in the comment section below? Happy learning! Thank you for watching this video. We'll meet again soon with another informative video. Until then, bye!